Mr. Speaker, I, I beg to move the following motion standing in my name. Whereas is provided under Section 631E of the Public Finance Management Act, CAP 15.01, the Act, that the Minister of Finance may, by affirmative resolution of Parliament, borrow from a bank or other financial institution for the capital or current expenditure of government. And whereas it is further provided under Section 64 of the Act that money borrowed by the government must be paid into and form part of the consolidated fund. And whereas the Minister of Finance considers it necessary to borrow from the Saudi Fund for Development the sum of 281 million 250,000 Saudi reals to finance the construction and rehabilitation of St. Jude Hospital project. And whereas the loan is repayable in 20 years after the grace period of five years from the date of the loan agreement, commencing on the 15th day of May and the 15th day of November in each year after the grace period. And whereas, interest at a rate of 2% per annum is payable semi-annually on the principal amount of the loan with John and outstanding. Be it resolved that Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to borrow from the Saudi Fund for Development the sum of 281 million 250,000 Saudi Saudi reals to finance the reconstruction and rehabilitation of St. Jude Hospital project. Be it, be it further resolved that the loan is repayable in 20 years after the grace period of five years from the date of the loan agreement commencing on the 15th day of May and the 15th day of November in each year after the grace period. Interest at a rate of 2% per annum is payable semi-annually on the principal amount of the loan with John and outstanding. Mr. Speaker, finally, finally, the people of St. Lucia will see the completion of the St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, and this resolution, Mr. Speaker, to borrow what is in effect 75 million US dollars for the reconstruction, the complete rehabilitation of St. Jude and the rehabilitation of the stadium is coming at a time, Mr. Speaker, when the people of St. Lucia have yearned and have asked that the hospital be completed. And Mr. Speaker, this timing is also significant because it was in 2009 that St. Jude was devastated by a fire, Mr. Speaker. And that fire saw the loss of some lives. And now, September the 12th, 2009, we are finally getting the money to completely, to completely refurbish, rehabilitate, and equipped St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker, finally. Now, Mr. Speaker, I want to pay tribute to some people in this honorable house. I want to pay tribute, Mr. Speaker, for on the St. Jude story to the parliamentary representative for Viewfort South, Mr. Speaker. And for his continuation, Mr. Speaker, and I also want to pay tribute to another former Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, the member for Castries North, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> who, Mr. Speaker, on attaining political office in 20, 
11 May, 2016. And 20 in, in 2007, Mr. Speaker, 207, and the fire destroyed the hospital in 2009. He began the process of reconstruction of the St. Jude facility, Mr. Speaker. And when the people of St. Lucia made a decision in 2011, which he gladly accepted and understood that the people have a right to make their decision, Mr. Speaker, and he demitted office with dignity, with honor, and never tried to destroy the country that he had sought, that he ruled a few years or days ago, Mr. Speaker. The present government at the time, under Dr. Kenny Anthony, decided that they would have continued work on the St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker. And so, the work continued, but at no time did the government ever had, ever have a direct line of funding for the construction of the Central Hospital. But with the help of friendly countries, with the help of voluntary organizations, even the help of children who collected funds, Mr. Speaker, both of these prime ministers continued construction of the St. Jude Hospital, Mr. Speaker. And I want to pay tribute to them, Mr. Speaker, in public for their foresight and the understanding that the people's health cannot be treated as a political football. I want to pay tribute to them, Mr. Speaker. I also want to pay tribute for the yellow parliamentary representatives in the area who had suffered the pain of residents at the St. Jude Hospital suffered the pain, Mr. Speaker, of having to get health service delivered to them from a stadium. And that transition came when the Honourable Member for Cassius North was the Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. And the members that represented the South constantly and persistently had to be able, had to be selling their constituents, soon come, soon come, soon come. But, Mr. Speaker, Today, I, I feel humbled, Mr. Speaker, to come to this parliament, to be able to tell the people of St. Lucia that we found the funding for the St. Jude Hospital. And this funding comes from the Saudi fund for development, Mr. Speaker, and, Mr. Speaker, the rehabilitation of the stadium for the sports people of St. Lucia. Well, Mr. Speaker, there are a few significant things in this funding, Mr. Speaker. First of all, it's the first funding that the government has negotiated directly for fund, and in there, there is a disaster clause, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, this disaster clause means, and I want to read exactly what it means, Mr. Speaker. It's, it reads as follows. The, bo the borrower may apply for renegotiation on deferring payment of the principal amortization and accrued interest during a period of disaster. Which event is confirmed in an event report of the Caribbean Catastrophic Risk Insurance Facility and included in insured coverage of St. Lucia, provided that such event is considered as having a serious adverse effect on the payment ability of the borrower? What that means, Mr. Speaker, is in these times of climate change, Mr. Speaker. And talking about climate change, I want us to spare a thought and a prayer for the people of Morocco yes, who suffered devastation of uh, an earthquake, Mr. Speaker. Morocco, the country of Morocco have been friends to us. The country of Morocco has done well for us. And we want to, share, we want to spare a, a, a moment, Mr. Speaker, if you don't mind, for could we ask the parliament 
this speaker to stand for the people of Morocco and the people of Libya, this speaker. <coughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, honorable members. Mr. Speaker, I was saying, and in those times of climate change, Mr. Speaker, when any time, within a few hours, Mr. Speaker, as has been shown in Dominica and in Guinea, Mr. Speaker, and in St. Lucia, although we were fortunate in that wasn't as destructive as Dominica, Hurricane Thomas, and the Christmas Eve stuff, that the entire economy, the entire GDP of the country can be wiped off. And what is significant, Mr. Speaker, is after these events, we still had to pay our loans. And this is why the world is searching for a new developmental and loan paradigm where there can be some clause that deals with the vulnerability of our islands. So instead of using the traditional gross national income to measure the, 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 measure the strength of an economy, we'll use a multi-vulnerability index that will build into it resilience for disasters, Mr. Speaker. So I'm very pleased to tell you that the government has been able to negotiate a disaster clause Mr. Speaker, in this agreement with the Saudis for the rehabilitation of St. Jude Hospital and the stadium, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as I said, this funding will rehabilitate the entire hospital. And that is continuing the work that has started, Mr. Speaker. Come, Mr. Speaker, when I invite you to visit Saint, the St. Jude hospital, Mr. Speaker, the original structure. You will see for yourself, Mr. Speaker, that work has, the level of work that has been done in this hospital, Mr. Speaker, by a St. Lucian contractor is commendable, Mr. Speaker. You will see that the hospital is ready, or the buildings are ready, to receive the mechanical, the engineering, and plumbing fixtures, Mr. Speaker. That is what's happening in this hospital. And when rain falls, Mr. Speaker, there is no leak. When rain falls, Mr. Speaker, there is no flooding inside, Mr. Speaker. When rain falls, Mr. Speaker, there is no need to seal windows, Mr. Speaker, because what we have is a structure that there's been absolutely no document that is available no authentic document that's available that says that this structure could not have continued as a hospital, Mr. Speaker. There is absolutely no document, Mr. Speaker. No document, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, that is for another show. Because this morning, I don't want to go into, in, I don't want to get involved in any rancor, Mr. Speaker. But this morning, we, we ought to be very happy, Mr. Speaker. Every living solution, if they love St. Lucia, should be happy to know that St. Jude Hospital, the funding is available to complete it. Because, Mr. Speaker, no solution should be satisfied with our people being receiving medical attention in a stadium. And rise on my feet, I want to applaud and thank the doctors and the nurses and the workers and the board of St. Jude and the people who have, who have been providing services to people in the stadium, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank them. And no St. Lucia, if you love St. Lucia, today ought to, to be a day 
of rejoice of rejoicing, Mr. Speaker. Because finally, we can see the light. And we should have the maturity to understand that when it comes to business of health, and when it comes to business, the business of seeing about the future of the health of the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, we should be able to bury our pride and say, we made a mistake and we are, con and we are continuing and supporting what is necessary for the people of the country, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this loan will do the following. Let me, Mr. Speaker, talking about loan, because I know you will tell me about the, the, the national debt. This loan, Mr. Speaker, is for about 202 million EC dollars, or 4.3 percent of the national debt, Mr. Speaker. 4.3 percent of the national debt, Mr. Speaker, is that what it's increased by? And it's in concessional in nature, Mr. Speaker. And it's at 2%. It's a, a fixed rate of 2%, not fluctuating. And again, this is, this is significant, Mr. Speaker. And any student will tell you, with the variations in interest rates in the world, as, this, as we have now, the fluctuations. You have every day, Mr. Speaker, there are fluctuations in the, in the, in the, in the interest rate, Mr. Speaker. We have negotiated a loan at fix, a fixed rate of 2%, Mr. Speaker, for 20 years. A fixed rate of 2% for 20 years with a five-year grace period, Mr. Speaker. In these times of fluctuating loan interest, Mr. Speaker. And I'm, I dare say, increasing loan interest, Mr. Speaker. This is what we've been able to neg 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 negotiate for the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Exactly. So, Mr. Speaker, this loan will we'll do the following, Mr. Speaker. It will rehabilitate the entire hospital, Mr. Speaker. The entire hospital. That means, Mr. Speaker, that the East Wing, the Surgical Wing, the West Wing, the Laundry Maintenance Building, the Dialysis Building, the Psychotherapy Building, the volunteers' quarters, even the chapel, the chapel, yes, Mr. Speaker. The isolation on, and contamination building, and the South Wing, Mr. Speaker, what the mayor of Euford South calls the box, will be preserved and will be allowed, will be used at a late, at a later, at a later moment, a later time, Mr. Speaker will be preserved. Because, because you see, if we will not leave the box for rats, for rats yeah, of a bush, yes. of a bat, yeah, yeah. even though our position is that the box was a waste of time, because this government respects and understands that when money is spent, it doesn't come from our pocket, it comes from the pockets of the taxpayers of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, or from the taxpayers of different countries. So we will not allow it to decay and to allow bush and rats and bats and cows and, and, and destroy two buildings. We will preserve it. We'll preserve it, Mr. Speaker, for future use. We'll preserve it, even though we do not agree with it, but we'll preserve it, Mr. Speaker. That is how we'll, that is how we'll operate, Mr. Speaker, as far as is concerned, Mr. Speaker. Further, Mr. Speaker, further, this loan, Mr. Speaker, will provide for the hospital all the necessary state of the art technology and equipment that is needed, Mr. Speaker, including security arrangements, etc., Mr. Speaker. And talking about security arrangements, the first thing we did, Mr. Speaker, is we fenced the hospital compound. How can you have a medical facility and the compound is not fenced? The first thing we did, Mr. Speaker, is to fence it, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this loan will provide all the medical equipment and furniture. Mr. Speaker, and you know, this is not the time for that. But at some point, Mr. Speaker, the story will be told of the wastage that has taken place in St. Lucia as far as injuries is concerned, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will make 
a documented house available to show you millions and millions of dollars of equipment that was purchased and allowed to rot in containers, Mr. Speaker. Millions of dollars of equipment, millions. And some that were taken away and we never get back. We will bring the, the Mr. Speaker. No. And, 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 not now. <laughs> and Mr. Speaker, the information is available. Because what this government did, we allowed people who were working in the system. We didn't bring anybody else. We didn't fire anybody. And I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, some of these officials are great civil servants, but they were misguided. Some of them are great civil servants. We didn't change. We didn't chop. We didn't send people home, Mr. Speaker. All the people who were involved in the St. Jude Hospital project, they are still working there today, all of them. We didn't send them home, because we had nothing to hide. So, Mr. Speaker, there are containers and containers and containers of equipment, Mr. Speaker. And, Mr. Speaker, sometimes when you're in government, you can't respond to, anybody, to people who have nothing doing. You have to... You have to keep focus, Mr. Speaker. And that is why this government is keeping focus. We are keeping our eye on what is necessary for the improvement of life for the people of St. Lucia. That's what we're doing. So we're not running an answer everything, Mr. Speaker. We're not. But the evidence is there. So, Mr. Speaker, this loan is going to ensure that all the equipment needed for the hospital, Mr. Speaker, is available. Is available. And we have already started negotiations with the people at St. Jude for the transition into the new hospital, Mr. Speaker. But having said so, there are people who were paid money for equipment. There were people who were paid taxpayers' money for equipment, Mr. Speaker. And one day, a gentleman came to me and said to me, he said, Prime Minister, you seem to be running a country that's very rich. I said, what do you mean? And the evidence is available. I said, what do you mean? He said, I've been holding for you. I've been holding for you $1.2 million. 1.8, thank you, Minister, because you met him. $1.8 million of equipment for this St. Jude Hustler, Mr. Speaker. And he could not understand why we hadn't because he'd, be, he'd visited the, the original building, he'd seen the equipment could be used, he could not understand why that equipment was not used. $1.8 million. So he said he'd have to reconfigure, and the Minister of Health met him, and that equipment will be put into the new hospital, Mr. Speaker. $1.8 million in, a, in, a, in a supplier's hands. It was there from, I think, 20, what he said, 2019 or 2018, Mr. Speaker. He said he had that money. And it's a good thing he, he said that that money was available to us, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we are also going to rehabilitate, rehabilitate the sports stadium for the people of the South, Mr. Speaker. So this 202 million EC dollars, Mr. Speaker, will give the country a state-of-the-art facility will increase the national debt by 4.3 percent but when it comes to the people's health mr speaker we cannot look at how it will increase the national debt by because the health of the nation is the most important mr speaker and you can have no economy if the people are not healthy so we make no apologies for increasing national debt by 4.3% to fund a hospital that is needed by the people of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, as I said, to the, as I said earlier, I, I thank the Saudis, the Saudi Fund for Development, Mr. Speaker, and I apologize to them for all the, unsav on this, all the unsavory things that have been said about them, Mr. Speaker. I apologize to them and say to them that the majority of people in St. Lucia, the majority of people in St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, are very happy and thankful for the fact that they are lending, they are providing to the people of St. Lucia a loan at 2% interest with a disaster clause, five years grace, and to be paid 
in 20 years, Mr. Speaker. And that loan, we deal with, the, as I said, with the building and civil works, supply installation of medical devices and equipment, Mr. Speaker, and provide consulting services. And further, Mr. Speaker, the loan will ensure the loan is up to, up to, it has an expiry date, is up to 2028. Up to 2028. That is an expiry date. So we can use it between now and 2028. Up to 2028, Mr. Speaker. So Mr. Speaker, what, what is happening between that time and that time is up, uh, it's up to you to, to think of, Mr. Speaker. But I can tell you that um, I'm very, it's one of, the, one of the happiest days of my, of my parliamentary, of my parliamentary journey, Mr. Speaker, to stand in this honorable house with a group of men and women of like mind, of like purpose, and say to the people of St. Lucia that we have the money when the process is complete to completely and finally makes St. Jude Hospital available to the public of St. Lucia and the people of South in particular. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.